just as two real numbers can be combined by addition, subtraction, multiplication and division to get other real numbers, two functions can be combined to create new functions. Let's say the functions f of x equals 3x minus 5 and g of x equals x squared plus 1 are given. These functions can be combined to form the sum, difference, product and quotient of f and g. What's the sum of these two functions? Just add them, combine like terms and you're done. The sum of f and g we can write as f plus g of x which is f of x plus g of x. So f of x plus g of x equals 3x minus 5 plus x squared plus 1. All we can combine is negative 5 and 1. So we get x squared plus 3x minus 4 which is the sum of f and g and we are done adding f and g. What about the difference of these two functions? f minus g of x equals f of x minus g of x equals 3x minus 5 minus x squared plus 1. Be careful here and don't forget the parentheses. Because we are going to subtract the whole function g of x and not just x squared. If you don't put parentheses here, you're not going to subtract the 1. The next step is to remove the parentheses and the negative sign in front of it. Recall when doing that, the signs in front of x squared and 1 are going to be negative. So we get 3x minus 5 minus x squared minus 1. Negative 5 and negative 1 are the only like terms we can combine. So we get negative x squared plus 3x minus 6. So the difference of f and g is going to be negative x squared plus 3x minus 6 and we're done with this problem. By the way, if you are not a beginner and confident with negative signs in front of parentheses, you can just write negative x squared plus 3x minus 6. Let's look at the product of f and g. The multiplication of two functions is also very simple. All we have to do is to write f of x, which is 3x minus 5, and multiply it with g of x, which is x squared plus 1. Recall that we can solve this with the FOIL method. So 3x times x squared is 3x cubed. 3x times 1 is 3x. Negative 5 times x squared is negative 5x squared. And negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. So we get 3x cubed plus 3x minus 5x squared minus 5. As always, we are going to combine like terms, if possible, and write the solution in standard form. So we get 3x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x 
minus 5, which is the product of f and g, and we are done with multiplying f and g. What about f divided by g? Again, we just have to divide f by g, which we can write as f of x over g of x. So we are going to get 3x minus 5 over x squared plus 1. When adding, subtracting or multiplying functions, like we did in the previous examples, the domain is not restricted. We don't have any fractions or radicals, so we can plug in all real numbers for x. So the domain is all real numbers, it's negative infinity to infinity. But when we divide, we have to be careful. Recall that dividing by zero is not defined. So let's look closer at the denominator. Ask yourself, can the denominator be zero for a certain value of x? No matter which value for x we plug in, either positive, negative or zero, when we square, the result will always be positive or zero. And a positive or zero plus one is always positive. So the domain in this example is not restricted. It's all real numbers. It goes from negative infinity to infinity. But always look closer when you have fractions or roots to determine the domain. If you like my videos, like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and happy learning everyone.